St. Patrick is credited for converting Ireland to Christianity. What is less talked about is what were people converting from? What were the pre-Christian religious beliefs and practices of the British Isles? Well, the answer is easy, right? Celtic polytheism. But it's not so easy to summarize Celtic polytheism as it encompasses a bunch of different gods and goddesses, it encompasses a range of practices that differ, whether we're talking about Ireland, Britain, or Northern Europe. So I'm going to focus on one group that gets a lot of attention, the Druids. In ancient Roman texts, they are Celtic religious leaders and philosophers. In Irish medieval sagas, Druids are sorcerers and mystics that St. Patrick constantly battles against in spectacular public miracle duels. They loom large in modern media too, especially the fantasy genre. Bearded, white-robed priests practicing mystical arts in sacred groves or places like Stonehenge. These are romantic stereotypes dating back to 18th century English writers and are the same stereotypes that have inspired Druid revival groups, sometimes called Neo-Druidism. But setting aside these stereotypes, what do we actually know about the Druids? For you Druid fans, you won't be happy to hear that we know very little. We're relying almost entirely on biased secondhand sources from Greek and Roman authors, and some ambiguous archaeological evidence. Let's start with the textual evidence. Here are a few major Greco-Roman sources in roughly chronological order. Of these sources, only Julius Caesar could be considered a possible eyewitness. He writes basically a mini ethnography of the Druids in his book The Gallic War, which is his record of his campaigns throughout Western Europe and Britain. There's a good chance he encountered actual Druids, and he even mentions befriending one. All of these other authors are second-hand sources. So let's start with Julius Caesar. He says the Druids are in charge of religion, they have control over public and private sacrifices, and give rulings on all religious questions. Large numbers of young men go to them for instruction, and they are greatly honored by the people. So he's describing them as a sort of priesthood or a class of ritual specialists originating from Britain, but they also play a political role of some sort, serving as judges in civil disputes. Dio Chrysostom supports this, saying that they were seers who had significant control over local kings. The Celts appointed druids, who likewise were versed in the art of seers and other forms of wisdom without whom kings were not permitted to adopt or plan any course so that it was those who ruled and the kings became their subordinates and instruments of their judgment. So the Druids, at least in the Roman period, were not to be trifled with, a group with significant power. Julius Caesar says that they believe in a form of reincarnation, that the soul passes into another body at death, and he says that they worship some sort of parallel to the god Mercury as their main god among other gods. Caesar is possibly Romanizing the Celtic god Lucas here. They're also experts in astrology and astronomy. Caesar says, They hold long discussions about the heavenly bodies and their movements, about the size of the universe and the earth. And apparently they engage in both animal and human sacrifice. The Roman geographer Pliny the Elder, writing a century after Caesar, refers to them as magicians and describes an elaborate ritual of a white-robed druid sacrificing white bulls in sacred oak groves. This is the image that neo-druid groups imitate today. Other Roman authors fixate on supposed human sacrifices performed by Druids. Tacitus writes, It was their religion to drench their altars in blood of prisoners and consult their gods by means of human entrails. Now, divining oracles from looking at the entrails of animals was practiced throughout the Mediterranean world. The Romans themselves had a specialized class of priests called the Haruspex that would do this. Whether or not the Druids were actually using sacrificed human entrails for divination is is uncertain, but I'm personally skeptical, particularly because of the unlikely reports we have of their favorite method of human sacrifice, burning them alive in wicker effigies, made famous by the movie The Wicker Man. The Roman geographer Strabo writes that the Druids would build a huge colossus of straw and wood and throw a bunch of animals and humans into it to make a burnt offering. Julius Caesar records a similar practice, though neither Strabo or Caesar were eyewitnesses to this practice. So let's summarize. From Julius Caesar, Strabo, Pliny the Elder, and Tacitus, we get a picture of the Druids as an elite Celtic religious order, some of whom must have been specialized in astrology and magic, and 
plenty of rumors of brutal human sacrifice. The historian Barry Kunliff points out that Caesar never uses the term priest to describe them, so it's probably best to think of them as a cast of intellectuals or a tribal elite. Like I said above, I'm a little more skeptical of the human sacrifice claim. Accusations of human sacrifice appear again and again throughout history as something you invent about people that you don't like. We'll discuss the archaeological evidence for this later, but we should be skeptical of these authors in general. These Roman sources were written by elite foreigners with an elite audience back home in Rome. They had a vested interest in portraying the non-Romans as horrific barbarians deserving to be conquered. We shouldn't necessarily throw all of these sources out, but we need to be skeptical of them. Quoting Barry Kunliff again, all of these sources view Druidism through a filter of Roman disapproval. So, having said that, what can archaeological evidence do to help shed light on the Druids? Unfortunately, almost nothing. I'm sorry to be sharing the bad news. We don't have any direct archaeological evidence of an official priestly caste called Druids, so we need to lower the bar somewhat. Although we don't have direct evidence of Druids, we have plenty of archaeological evidence of pre-Christian religious leadership and ritual specialists like astrologers. The jump from pre-Christian religious leaders to Druids, though, is pure speculation. A century ago, archaeologists discovered a bronze Celtic lunar calendar in eastern France, dating to the 2nd or 1st century BC, not long before Julius Caesar's campaigns through the region, where he describes Druids being active. It apparently was buried in a Gallic temple. It labels certain months as good and other months as bad, and it even labels certain days as inharmonious. This must have been some sort of astrological tool and parallels what Caesar says about the Celts, calculating time by counting the nights rather than the days, and calculating the year around the moon phases. It also parallels what Caesar says about Druids being experts in astronomy and astrology. Now, we can only speculate that Druids made this calendar, but it does provide material evidence of astrological and religious specialists living around the same time period and same region as the Druids described by Caesar. Archaeologists have also discovered curious bronze spoons and burials throughout Ireland and Britain, which may have been astrological tools. They almost always are discovered in pairs, one spoon having a cross incised in the bowl and the other having a tiny hole drilled into it. Here are two examples from the British Museum. Both are found in Britain. We honestly have no idea what these were used for, but the most common theory is that they were tools for divination. A fortune teller or oracle would pour some sort of liquid into the spoon, maybe oil, water, or blood, and have the liquid drip onto the other spoon, reading an omen from where the drops fall on the quadrants incised on the second spoon. Some scholars think it might have been some sort of powder or sand instead of liquid. The examples discovered thus far date from the 5th century BC to the 1st century BC, so again the period when Druids were reportedly active. But what about the evidence for human sacrifice? Well, that's a little more unclear. Archaeologists have found Celtic shrines in France that apparently displayed decapitated heads, pillars with niches where skulls were placed. In Britain, there's evidence that the Celts would display heads on gates too, possibly sacrificed war prisoners. Barry Cunliffe, the famous Celtic historian who I've now cited a bunch thinks it's at least likely that the Celts practiced human sacrifice. I will editorialize here and say that I find the evidence unconvincing, but I'm not the Celtic historian here. Although people, including modern-day Druid revival groups, often link Stonehenge and the Druids, there is no real evidence for this association. It dates back to the 17th century, English scholars and hobbyists who theorized it was a temple of the Druids. Sacred structures that date closer to the Druids described by Julius Caesar were much different usually built of timber, square-shaped or circular-shaped. For example, archaeologists have excavated a Celtic temple on Hailing Island, which has some sort of circular building where visitors would have deposited votive offerings, including both animal bones and coins. Archaeologists suggest that all of this points to the presence of temple functionaries who must have been managing the sacred site, theorizing that it was a shrine to the Celtic version of Mars. All of this evidence can only point to a generalized Celtic religious specialist, though. There must have been some sort of priest-like functionaries who managed the shrines, astrologers with the necessary skill to make a calendar like the Caligny calendar, but any connection between the Druids and these artifacts, in the words of the archaeologist Andrew Fitzpatrick, 
Drake is pure speculation. We really are relying on textual sources when it comes to the Druids. By the time of St. Patrick, the Druids had already been enduring centuries of cultural change and outright suppression by the Romans. The Roman writer Suetonius says that Claudius very thoroughly suppressed the barbarous and inhuman religion of the Druids in Gaul, which in the time of Augustus had merely been forbidden to Roman citizens. In the medieval sagas, the Druids had become legendary, stereotypical sorcerers with little basis in historical fact. The institution either no longer existed or was so minor that they didn't have much standing in society anymore. The nature of our sources shapes how we view the Druids today. Are they romanticized, wise philosophers and keepers of sacred, mystical knowledge? Or are they bloodthirsty priests sacrificing humans in wicker effigies? Your opinion might be swayed depending on which Roman source you want to believe. And as frustrating as that is, they are a perfect example of the sometimes imperfect field of ancient history, trying to piece together an entire religious order from scraps of biased sources. So hats off to our ancient historians out there for making this possible. As always, thanks for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.